Here I'm going to prove a simple graph theory conjecture that was originally conjectured by an artificial intelligence program. Really this is just an excuse for me to finally get a chalkboard, because doing math on a big chalkboard is cool. But chalkboards cost about as much as the new dryer I recently had to buy, so I'm making one. Just need a board, primer, and some chalkboard paint. Yeah. Artificial intelligence is a popular topic in our culture at the moment. Some look to AI as humanity's savior. Others fail to see any significance with it at all in regard to our future. Some predict tribulations of apocalyptic magnitude as we are ushered into a grave dystopia. And I for one welcome our new AI overlords. But if the current state of artificial intelligence offers any hint as to the direction of where things are headed, then we are going precisely where the current state of artificial intelligence is indicating. What does that mean for mathematics? Well, automata systems are not foreign to the world of math. From before Leibniz through the controversies of the four color theorem, to proof assistant software, and up to now where students can cheat on their homeworks by accessing a simple app on their phones, technology has aided in amazing feats. One barrier, however, might seem impassable. Can an automatist system capture the creativity that is needed to work in the field of mathematics? Can a computer point mathematicians in interesting directions in order to uncover fruitful results? Can artificial intelligence posit meaningful mathematical conjectures? Let me introduce you to graffiti. Graffiti is a computer program which makes conjectures in the field of mathematics known as graph theory. Graffiti's development began in the mid-1980s, and since then, many graffiti results have been published, including results in chemistry, surprisingly enough. I first became aware of graffiti as an undergraduate. A professor of mine was one of graffiti's architects, Dr. Simeon Fajlowicz. 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 Dr. F. As part of an independent study, I got a chance to work with Dr. F and his graffiti program. He gave me several simple graffiti conjectures to prove. I'm going to show you one of them here. In order to do that, we first need to know a little about what exactly graph theory is. Graph theory is the study of graphs, which are mathematical objects that are typically formally defined via sets, but intuitively just think of them as collections of dots, some of which are connected. The genesis of graph theory goes back to Euler, who solved the famous Seven Bridges of Kronigsberg problem. Because graph theory has been around for some time, we have standard vocab and definitions like vertex, edge, face, degree, which is the number of edges incident to a vertex, or average degree, the average out of all the vertex degrees for a graph, distance, i.e. fewest number of edges needed to traverse from one vertex to another, or similarly, average distance, which is the average of all the distances for vertex pairs for a graph. Also common classifications for different types of graphs like trees or stars or planar graphs, which are graphs that can be drawn on a plane without edge crossing. And many results are already known, like the obvious handshaking lemma, which tells us that the sum of the degrees of all the vertices in a graph is twice that of the number of edges for the graph, or the famous Euler characteristic which quantifies the relationship between the number of vertices, edges, and faces for a planar graph. Yet because of its applicability to modern fields of study like computer science and it being so abstract, there is still much to be gleaned from graph theory. So now that we know a little bit about what graph theory is, here is a simple graffiti conjecture. If T is a tree graph, then the average degree of T is no more than its average distance. The first thing we should do is try to break it. Perhaps it's wrong and we can find a counterexample. First we'll count the degrees of each vertex and get the average degree. 
then we'll count all of the distances between the vertex pairs in the graph that's interesting and calculate the averages let's see and it checks out so far this also gives a hint as to the direction we'll want to go to prove the result but first for fun let's try a graph that's not a tree interesting okay so here's what I notice something seems special about the star graphs yep before we get to the main result though let's prove this useful claim out of all tree configurations for a set of vertices a star configuration produces a minimum total distance alright why is that well for a star graph with n vertices there are n minus one pairs of vertices that are distance one apart all others being distance two apart if a graph with n vertices has a smaller total distance than that of a star then some of the pairs that are two apart would need to drop down to being one apart and would end up with a graph that has at least n pairs of vertices being distance one apart but what does that mean our graph would have to have at least n edges forcing us into a situation where we have a graph with more than one face which wouldn't be a tree we see this with the Euler characteristic formula and now to the final result if t is a tree then its average degree is no more than its average distance using here the Euler characteristic again since t is a tree with n vertices it must have n minus 1 edges the handshaking lemma briefly mentioned earlier tells us that the sum of the vertex degrees is twice that of the number of edges since there are n of them that we're adding up the average degree for t must be 2 times quantity n minus 1 all over n now looking at the average distance there are n choose 2 pairs of vertices to consider so if k is the total distance the average distance is k divided by n choose 2 this simplifies things for us the average degree of t is no more than the average distance of t if and only if the square of the quantity n minus 1 is less than or equal to this total distance k now using our previous result this value k can't be less than the total distance for a star graph with n vertices so let's look at that there are n minus 1 pairs of vertices distance 1 apart the rest being distance 2 apart according to my calculations that puts the total distance for a star graph at exactly n minus 1 quantity squared so it's been shown that the total distance k of tree graph t must be greater than or equal to n minus 1 quantity squared which is equivalent to our conjecture that the average degree of t is no more than its average distance that's a good place to stop und damit sehen wir uns im nächsten video tschüss